Today we're exploring on Frag Hero whether the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 is really worth it. And I'll save you some time here. Unless you've got money to blow for fun, it's not. So you should stick to the 3080 middle ground option. Keep watching to find out why. And remember to like and subscribe, please. And as always, timestamps are in the description. So skip ahead to each GPU if you just want to see the specs of one that you've got on your mind. Nvidia revealed in September 2020 that they're releasing three new graphics cards this year, the GeForce RTX 3090, 3080 and 3070 as part of the 3000 series. Usually when you get a new graphics card revealed, you expect some improvements, but not as big a colossal jump in specs as Nvidia have taken with their GeForce RTX 3090. Nvidia have been a bit naughty in the past and fudged their data a little bit, but I'm going to take their GPU reveal info at face value for the purpose of being able to share my thoughts on it. The middle ground graphics card option of the 3080 doubles the speed of the 2080, but for half the price, just to whet your appetite for what the 3090 can do. And a big fat F to anyone who didn't hold out for the release and did in fact buy the 2080 recently. I'm sure a lot of you, like me, are eyeing up your gaming PC and considering gutting it completely to honor the 3090 and go full CPU upgrade and get a new case too. Let me know your suggestions for what theme I should go for this time. My current one's black and gold. What was your reaction to the Nvidia news? A lot of PC gamers have been indifferent to it, but maybe that's because of the price point. The absolute titan of a graphics card, RTX 3090, is coming in at $1,499, or from around £1,400. The price has shocked pretty much everyone, but it's kind of a testament to Nvidia wanting to actually sell as many units with this new high-spec GPU as possible, and for it to not flop, and remain at a competitive price. So if you try to get yourself a 2080 in the UK right now, it's coming up at 1,149 on the UK site that I was looking at, just for a price comparison there for you. With the 3090, or BFGPU as Jensen called it in the live stream, you get a crazy 24 gigabytes of memory and a three slot flow through cooler, which keeps the card 30 degrees colder than the Titan RTX because of its triple slot cooling. The RTX 2080 ray tracing power was only, and only, I say in quotation marks, 34 teraflops, so yeah, the 3090 literally doubles that. It's got more than 50% additional memory bandwidth. So an issue with it is that it's 12.3 inches in length and 5.4 inches in height. So that's a big boy. You'll most likely need to get a bigger case if you've got an SFF. But what does all this actually mean though? So it means you're gonna be less sweaty in your gaming chair for one, your PC is gonna work less and your gameplay visuals will be much more complex. The RTX 3090 is the only Ampere GeForce GPU that has NVLink support this round too. So that's worth considering as a pro to get the 3090. The eight nanometer partnership with Samsung allowing that move to the incredible Ampere from Turing, giving 2.7 times the shade of performance with over 28 billion transitors. Jensen says that Ampere is their greatest generational leap ever, and that gets me just as buzzed as when you hear world premiere at live gaming events. Nvidia and Samsung together anyway should be a total powerhouse. The 3090 got my 8K dreams flowing, but realistically, at half the price of the 3090, it uses the same GDDR6X memory as its big brother with 10 gigabytes and can hit 40K 60 frames per second in the majority of titles with ray tracing enabled. It totally smashes its predecessor, the 2080, away with its 30 teraflops instead of the former's 11. You can get this neat card up to a max 93 degrees Celsius and the card's power is 320 watts, which is only 30 less than the 3090. All three GPU offerings will let you push your PC to 93 degrees though. At 11.2 by 4.4 inches, you'll most likely be able to fit this GPU inside the case you've already got if you do decide to go for this as an upgrade, which I think you should. The key thing to note here too is that the 3080 is still incredibly epic as a GPU offering and will give you gorgeous gameplay for a steal of a price. I promise I'm not affiliated with Nvidia, I just really love this graphics card. At the entry level of the new GeForce 3000 Spectrum is the 3070. I'm laughing at this as an entry level because it's still a big expense for some gamers. The RTX 3070 is coming later than its Big Brother models in October for $499 or £469. Nvidia are claiming that it'll outperform the 2080 using less power too, despite it being limited to 8GB and that older model memory speed of GDDR6. 
so not the newer model that the 80 and the 90 are blessed with. It just can't quite claim that statement of being twice as good as a 3080, but the new RTX API should push through the specs to let you play the games you love in 4K. At 9.5 by 4.4 inches, this one should easily fit into the case you already have, so that's less expense again. You can't talk about Nvidia without talking about AMD. It'd be like mentioning the Xbox Series X without even considering PS5. The questions on my mind now are, what are AMD going to put out with their big Navi product? And will it offer the same or similar performance for less money? If you want to nab a new GPU on the market by any of the big dogs when it first releases, you usually have to pre-order. But how can you choose Nvidia's when you don't know what AMD will have to offer? Nvidia have all their cards on the table, quite literally, so this is definitely a waiting game, but we can at least try to guess what's coming so we're better prepared. You're going to have to set an alarm though on each day of release, so 17th September, 24th September, whichever one you're going for, because you're not able to pre-order, so don't miss out. AMD put out the RX 580, a 6.17 teraflop GPU in 2017. But the AMD Radeon 7 was the graphics card set out to compete as best it can with Nvidia's 2080. The 7 has 16GB of memory, so doubling the 2080's memory and smashing its bandwidth memory out the park. And it's a 7nm card, so remember by comparison, the upcoming Nvidia 3090 is 8nm. Of course though it's not just about memory, and AMD's 7 didn't quite beat the 2080. We can surely expect an announcement any day now about what AMD are going to release to compete with the 3090. Everyone has been talking about how Nvidia have absolutely destroyed the capabilities of next gen consoles, but for me that's like comparing the nutritional values of some new steak diet with some vegan diet. These two things just aren't comparable and we don't even have the same audience for them, so why are we putting two things? that are from a different league in the same league. But anyway, Nvidia releasing the GPU for next gen console release does suggest that Sony and Microsoft could be more of their competition than AMD, or they could just be getting it out there for Christmas wish lists, or launching graphics cards, you know, just around the same time of year as they do every year. Nvidia's new GPUs harbor the same assimilation power as the PS5 in terms of being able to decompress data from an SSD. So that means the same shorter loading times that next gen have been promising. They're also releasing better drivers called NVIDIA Reflex to help with latency, so that's your high ping, which is a crucial thing if you're a competitive gamer. That means gamers no longer need to base readiness to enter a match off guessing from their FPS. Also, other essential benefits like less time to get kills confirmed, quicker loot chest opening, and seeing your enemies quicker, so peak is advantage. Nvidia Reflex will deliver latency improvements in GPU intensive gaming scenarios on GeForce, GTX 900, Nvidia graphics cards in top competitive games, including Fortnite, Valorant, Apex Legends. So these latency software updates to me are a nice big F you to AMD because we all know it's AMD's drivers that are a bit problematic. Cyberpunk 2077 fans in particular should be piqued by these new graphics updates because of the new shaders and other ray tracing capabilities that the new GPUs by Nvidia will grant you. It's just going to create such an amazing experience. Okay, so to summarise, the 30K series low-end spec 3070 still offers incredible leaps and decent power consumption, whilst the high-end 3090 is going to give you a fat amount of memory and 8K gaming if that's your thing and your PC can run it. Plus the series in general has sweet lights, so I'm sold. Aside from that, another few key roundup points to remember are lower latency with those reflex drivers and a price that's actually pretty fair for what you're getting, which means in terms of value for money, it's a great investment. Ampere will offer incredible performance within this series, so it's so worth it, especially if you're still using Pascal and skip the Turing generation. The push-pull fan system here in the 30k is great too, and now is the perfect time to get on board the CUDA train. For the regular gamer, the 3090 probably isn't worthwhile, and you should just stick to the 3080, which will be more than powerful enough and half the price. I hope you found this video on Nvidia's new GeForce 30k series GPUs useful. Please drop a comment to let me know which GPU, if any, from the series you're going to go for. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Frag Hero.